A few months ago, I made a mushroom wreath on this channel using clay and fake plants. And you guys, I freaking love that thing. It hangs over my desk and really just sparks joy. And I need more. So that got me thinking like, what else could I make to decorate that really just like sets the vibe? This very much like enchanted forest, fairy, goblin core aesthetic that I'm like very into right now. And sometime last year, I noticed these dome shaped glass jars like all the craft stores had them joann's michael's hobby lobby like even target had these and every time i saw them i made a mental note i was like you know what i i like these that will make a really good something and now is that time i'm ready to make that something however i couldn't find the jars anymore you guys i've been to four stores today and i can't find these freaking jars I even asked somebody for help, which is something I like never do. Mm -mm. I, I was like, sir, do you have those like glass, like dome terrarium type things? And he was like, no, we don't sell those. Like, okay then. I mean, you had a whole shelf of them a couple months ago, but that's fine. I saw some on Amazon that look promising, but they're like 30 bucks a pop. Uh-uh, no, no, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Not today, Jeffrey, uh-uh. And then actually I got lucky because I found them at Ikea. They were in the very last section of the store with the fake plants and pots and such. They had a couple different sizes, which were pretty much like exactly what I was looking for. They do have metal bases and I was hoping for wooden ones, but that, that's okay. I gotta take what I can get at this point. And these were both like $12.99, I think. So a bit, bit more reasonable. I learned the technical term for these is a cloche. I'll link these ones down below as well as some other options that I found online in case you're in the market, in the market for a, a good cloche. And now that I have these, the goal is to turn it into like a whimsical little mushroom terrarium that I can sit, sit on my shelf. Like a little scientific specimen, if you will. I feel that this is a good use of my time, so let's get started. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to my craft table also known as my kitchen island, but it's always so covered in my art craft that it's really unusable for any type of kitchening experience. It just do be like that. Okay, let's get started. Let's open up these cloches. Actually, that word's a little weird to me. I'm just gonna call them terrariums. So for the bottom of these terrariums, I'm gonna shy away from gluing anything directly onto the metal base. That way I can just, I can reuse these in the future if I ever wanna make something new. So I bought these foam forms from the craft store to use as my base. They sell these in like all different sizes and colors. I picked these green ones because I thought they would camouflage better with what I've got planned. I got two different shapes. I wasn't sure which one was going to work better, but I'm gravitating towards this sphere shape. So let's open her up and then I'm just gonna kind of compare it against the metal bases that I have for each and trim them down to fit. I cut the foam in half with a serrated knife and I just need to shave it down now bit by bit until it fits nicely inside the glass topper. Right. Now to make these mushrooms, I'm gonna be sculpting them out of air dry clay, and I'm trying a new technique this time. Someone left me a really nice comment on my last video suggesting I use aluminum foil to fill the inside of my figures as a way to save clay. So I'm trying that. Also, I think it gives me a way to kind of size up my mushrooms and get a feel for how big they need to be inside the jars. I've made three little aluminum stems here that are roughly the same height that I'm aiming for with my sculpt. So hopefully this will be a helpful guide for me. Now here's the clay I'm gonna be using. Like I said, it's air dry clay. This brand is Amico Brent. I'm gonna take out a nice big chunk to start here. Now the smaller terrarium is just going to have one single tall mushroom. I'm gonna cover my aluminum stem in a layer of clay. I'm trying not to make this too thin. If the clay wall is too thin, there's a good chance that it might crack. So I'm really trying to build up like a solid layer around the form, but like also not too thick either. I. I don't want it to be junky, please. Uh, this is this is what I landed on. We will see if it works. But the stem shape is pretty simple. Once I got that all smoothed out, I'm moving on to the mushroom cap. I'm flattening out a round pancake shape here and making sure to reference that glass topper every now and then as I go, just to make sure I'm not I'm not making this too big. Like it is it is going to fit when I'm done. It would be very much like me to not do this, could do the whole mushroom and then have it not fit in the jar in the end. 
Now I've added some more clay to kind of thicken up this cap shape here and I'm gonna make an indent in the top. So we've got kind of like a UFO shape going on here. Then I can attach our two pieces together here by carving out a nice little spot for the stem on the bottom of the cap. I'm also gonna rough up the texture on each side. And then this is a new development. I was getting tired of always needing good slip and sometimes not having any in my water dish. As you can see here, my water is looking real empty. So I made my own little reservoir of slip that's just ready to go when I need it. Look at that, that's the good stuff. It's also really easy to make. You can just let a slab of clay dry out completely and then pound it up till it's kind of like a gravelly texture, add some water, mix it around, put it in a container and like, that's it. It's so helpful to have on hand. We've got one solid mushroom here. I do want to carve some more details into it, but it's just too wet at this point. I need to let the clay dry out a little bit. So I'm just setting it up on a little stand I have over here and getting to work on our other two mushrooms. This is the bigger terrarium. So I'm hoping I can fit two, one big and one small. I'm gonna do the same thing covering the stems in clay before working on the caps. This a variety, this species of mushroom is gonna be a little bit different than the last one. So for this stem, I'm giving it a bulkier, more bulbous base, as well as a little skirt around the top of the stem. Then I can tackle the cap. This shape is gonna be kind of like the classic mushroom image, what looks like an open umbrella, I guess. I'm gonna smooth out that form and attach it onto the stem. Same as the last one, carving out a little space for it to sit and then filling it up with slip. I uh, noticed in person that this imagery was a little um, questionable. It's, um, oh my God, uh, it's coming at me. Okay, it's a hundred times worse on camera. So just, uh, just, just stop, okay? Don't, don't look at that. But also do, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to show it. Um, so just know that I know that you know that I know. Okay, moving on. I left that guy upside down in a bowl to dry. And now we can move on to this little tiny baby mushroom that I have. We can just kind of breeze through this sculpt. I'm doing the same thing I did with the last one, but just with like a slightly different cap shape. This one will be smaller and more rounded, like it hasn't quite opened up yet. Now, I forgot to mention this on the last mushroom, but I'm doing the same thing to this little guy as well. This is also a new technique. I'm trying to use that slip to create some real like good gloopy, nice texture on this stem here. Is this a thing? Is this gonna work? I, um, I I have no idea, but we're, we're gonna find out. We're just gonna let this guy dry too, and then we can go back to carving some details on the other drier ones. This next clip is actually 24 hours later. The clay has hardened enough where I can still carve into it easily, but the whole thing won't morph or lose its shape when I touch it. I'm gonna use this pointed carving tool and carve some lines, create some more of that good texture on the underside of the cap, and then we can let that dry and harden completely for another 24 hours. Now here's our first mushroom and this guy had some casualties. Remember if I said I didn't make the clay thick enough, it would crack? Well, exhibit A, it did just that. I made the walls too thin. No, oh, so we've got some so we've got some problems here. I'm going I'm gonna stay strong and hope that it doesn't get worse and that maybe we can fix it later with the paint. We'll see. We're gonna carve into it and we'll check in the next day. Oh no, it's the next day. It got worse. I think this is the most serious crack I've dealt with so far. Uh, well, except for maybe this one. If I was making this for somebody else, I might have scrapped this piece and started over. But since it's for me, I don't really care that much. I can live with the imperfection. I just tried to lay down some really thick, nice coats, really get in those cracks, and it dried virtually smooth. Like, you really can't tell. So I, I can live with that. Now, let's get these other two primed. This little guy was perfectly fine, but the big one, oh my god, was this heavy, like too heavy. I'm worried about the stem being able to support the top on its own. I feel like I should have made the stem in solid clay and the cap with the aluminum center so it's more lightweight. Ugh, yikes. Okay, mistakes, mistakes all around, but it's it's okay. We, we are Tim Gunn and we're gonna make it work. Getting into the actual paint job here, I've got a light beige all over the stem and gills of our lone mushroom here. Then I'm using a little sponge to stipple on some more color. I'll use a couple different tones of that brown and beige to build up the grooves underneath the cap. So it's got dimension or something. And then for the cap, I'm gonna use a few different colors. I, I love a gradient, what can I say? I'm doing red in the center, that fades into orange, that fades into yellow. It's a lot of work back and forth to the colors, but I like it, I think it's worth it. 
Now, these other two mushrooms will be easier to paint, not as many different colors going on. We're doing these in the classic Amanita color scheme with the white stems and the red cap. I added a creamier white to the stem and I'm adding in some splotches of brown onto the bulb here. Just like if you pulled this baby right out of the dirt. Wipe it all off because you hate it. Right, okay, perfect. And then we're gonna paint a few layers of deep red paint on the top here. Look at that cutie. Oh, I'm not gonna paint the spots on the top just yet. I have a plan for those later. Okay, now let's just speed through the painting of our big Amanita here. Same technique as the little one. And the reason I'm not doing the spots yet is that I'll need this to be standing upright in order to dry. So I'm gonna wait until I get these situated in their homes in the terrarium before I finish the paint job. I'm going to add a quick top coat onto these to protect the paint job. I did about three layers of each, but leaving the top of the red caps alone for now. Okay, now it's time for assembly. This part was really fun, actually. The last part was more like artsy. This part is more crafty. I need those stems to connect into the form bases that we made earlier, and I wanna make sure they're securely in there and they've got a little stability to support the extra weight. So I'm carving a hole in the center of these spheres, just big enough for the stem to fit in snugly and deep enough where it's not like wobbling around. And then we need to deck these out. It's time to decorate, which is my favorite part of any project. I got this moss from the craft store. The brand is called The Moss collection. I'm gonna dump some out so we can see what we're working with here. I know I'm mostly gonna use the dark green but we can kind of add in some variation here with the brown and the lime green and we've got some like fun dried textures in this bag as well. So I'm just busting out the glue gun and start building up the moss coverage. Once they're all covered, they are so like fluffy and soft and nice. They were like a bit too fluffy to fit inside the glass. So I'm giving them a little, little haircut here with a pair of scissors. Then I can fill those holes in with hot glue and secure our fungus. Now we have a nice secure setup to finish painting the spots on these two mushrooms. I really wanted the spots to like pop out and acrylic paint just wasn't gonna cut it. So I got a bottle of this puffy fabric paint. Since the stuff is so thick, I know it's gonna hold its shape better and hopefully give like a nice 3D texture onto these mushrooms. After this is dry, I can zhuzh these up a little bit more with some fake plants that I have and then we can see the final result. Oh my God, I love how these turned out. I think they look so fun, but I don't think you're seeing what I'm seeing. You're not seeing their full potential here. So I'm gonna style them in the way that I think they deserve to be styled, and then we can give final thoughts. I'm talking about this is everything i i want my entire house to look like this the vibe is haunted apothecary herbologist off duty i'm going to use these to decorate a bookshelf but you could also add some fairy lights like these inside the glass and use this as like a funky little night light i mean hello that's everything anyways i hope you enjoyed watching this video subscribe maybe if you like this kind of thing and i'll see you in the next one bye